Hey guys, Shark21 here we go with another description tutorial. Sorry it took me so long to get this one out. I've been kind of busy with some other things like school. But I'm back now, so what I'm going to be talking about are how to make your own animations using the Roblox animation editor and how to use click detectors. So go ahead and go into Roblox Studio and then just go to a base plate. Go here, base plate. And so, first I'll show you how to make your own animations. To do that, you need to go to the plugins tab up here, and then go over to manage plugins. And then, if you already have plugins, they should show up right here. What we need to do is we need to go over to the find plugins button. Let's click on that. Okay, then it should bring you to this page right here. Don't worry about logging in or anything. We need to go, it should go to library, then up to plugins page. And then what you want to do is on the front page here, it should show up right here, animation editor. Right there, see? It should say free, and also should, the creator should be Roblox. If it's not there, just go up to this search bar and then type in animation editor. And then just look for the one that's by Roblox and click on that one. So when you find it, click on it. And then what you want to do is after it's finished loading, click on the install button. Okay, it says animation editor has been successfully installed. Please open a new window to begin using this plugin. Press OK. <coughs> and just go ahead and exit out of that plugin management. Uh, no, I'm going to save that. Okay, after that, click on the base plate again. And then, we we'll just go back to plugins, then these five buttons should show up right here. Animation editor, create block rig, create man rig, create woman rig, rig, then create mesh rig. Okay, so now we have the animation editor installed onto our studio. So now we're going to use it. So first we need some, some kind of character to animate. To do that, you just go up here, uh, click on the rig you want to create. The block rig is like the standard character, kind of like the new character. It's a little bit different because it has a blocky head. The the man rig, I believe. I have the new Roblox 3.0 character, I believe that's what it's called. And then the woman rig, you know, just the girl rig thingy. See? That one. I'm going to do the mesh rig because that will make it work for pretty much all of them. So to click on create mesh rig up here, that one right there, and it'll create that kind of mesh. I recommend doing it with this one because then this then the animation would look pretty good on all kind of meshes for the characters. Okay, so we got this thing right here has like the same stuff as a normal character would, just doesn't have those animate scripts and stuff in it like that. So what you need to go do is go to the button that says animation editor with that little I don't know what that is. I guess that little yellow circle thingy on it. Just click on that that says animation editor. And then it says select base of the an of the object to animate. So what you want to do is you click on the torso of the character. And then oh, it's actually the human and root part. So that should show up right there. Click on OK. And you should see this GUI pop up here. First, I'm going to go over some things first. So over here, on this plus button, click on it, and the little menu will show up. The play, save, load, import, export, reset, and debug. So the play button, what it does, it plays your animation. So nothing happens right now because there's nothing to play. See that showed up? It's not going to play anything because I haven't recorded any animations yet. So it plays your animation. This saves it. This doesn't exactly work very well. It won't be. It'll. They'll, the thing will be saved in the in the character. An anim saves right here. So like, if you leave the game and don't save this part there, then that won't be saved. So this is really not the best thing to do. This will load it. Uh, pretty self-explanatory. The import that will import a, a an animation that has already been made on Roblox. 
I've tried it before, it doesn't really work that well, so I never use it. The export, that is when you publish your that's when you publish your animation that you made to Roblox, you can actually use it. That actually does work. Um the reset that will that will get rid of all of the animation keyframes in this timeline right here. So basically it'll re it'll reset it'll reset your animation and debug you know, kind of self-explanatory debugs it. It never really helps me. I mean, so I never use it. Okay, so over here, under the things of timeline right here, it shows all of this, all of these uh, names right here. The human root part, and then the torso, left leg, right leg, left arm, right arm, head. So these are the things that you're animating. The human root part is like the base of everything, which is like you know that part there that I'm that I have selected. The left leg, torso, and all that stuff. And then up here, you should see like this this purple line with this red box up there, I guess. And there's like these all these numbers like 0 0.15, 0.30. That's like the length of the animation. Right now, the length of it is two seconds. So that means the animation will be two seconds long, obviously. And the priority. So what this does is default is for the priority the default is core you can go all the way up to action. So priority is like how important the animation is. Like let's say you made two different animations. Like let's say you made your own walking animation and its priority was core and then you made another animation that was like running and its uh, priority was idle. So what it does is that if the priority is higher than is higher than the another animation it will override it and play it over that one so like so like I said before the walking animation let's say that would be core so if that animation was already playing on my dummy character right here and then I and then I tried to play the run animation at the same time the walk animation would stop and the run animation would play because it is has a higher priority core is the lowest and action is the highest so and then the loop, the loop button right here. I'll just try to get rid of that. So the loop button right here, that will make your animation loop. If you click on that, it'll keep playing over and over and over until you stop it. And this X button will exit out of the thing right here. So now let's make it, let's start animating it. So let's just make, I don't know, let's make this arm rotate. So what you want to do is that for each frame, I guess you want you could say, you want this to be this red thing to be at a certain area. So right here, this is the starting area. So let's move it, go slide it over, and then let's rotate the arm. Let's go like that. Let's rotate this one too. Alright, this again. Sometimes, sometimes this thing is kind of buggy. Sometimes you won't be able to select it. If that happens, just click on it up here, and then you'll be able to select it what you want. See that? I'll slide this over again. Let's do that. And let's do that again. Oops. Let's do that. And let's do that. Okay, so the animation is about 0 0.15 seconds long. Just click on that little plus button, click play, and see what happens. So you get, did the animation. It was kind of fast because. Um, <coughs> because it was only like 15, 0 0.15 seconds long. Let's reset it and make it a bit longer. Let's make it go over here. Let's do it like that. And then we'll do that. Let's do that. And let's see what it does. Play. Do that. Play. Okay, so as you can see, did the animation is a bit more slow. But yeah, that's that's pretty much how you use the animation editor. If if you made a cool animation that you wanted to do, and again you go here, on export. This thing should show up here. Here. Wait for it to load. Come on. 
I did this a lot for me. It's probably because the computer is kind of slow. But I just have to just wait for it to load. Okay, I'll be back in a minute after it's finished loading. Okay, so finally loaded. So after it's finished uh, loading, this little window should show up. It says choose an existing animation to override or create a new animation. So if you were going to, let's see, I have this tackle animation here. If I want to make have this new animation uh, overwrite, that just click on it and then and then it'll upload it to it. If you want to create a new one, just click on the create new button. Then after that finished loading, you should get the screen. Make settings. Type in the name of it. We'll just name this testing and type in description and then finish. Sometimes it could take a while. Okay, and then after it loads, it'll show this screen here, and then once it's finished loading, just click OK. And then it's uploaded to your pro to your profile. And then you can and then you can, you know, get the get its ID and put it in the game. I already described how to do this in a later I described how to put it in animation in your game in a previous um tutorial. So yeah, that's how you use the animation editor, it's pretty easy. It's an alternative to using a bunch of C framing and stuff to make your own custom animations. I use this kind of often. Not that much though. Alright. So now let's move on to that. Now let's move on to the click detectors. So what a click detector is is kind of self explanatory. It detects if you know it detects if you clicked your mouse. But it's more than just that. It's, it detects if you clicked a part. So for example you get this. It the click detector the click detector will detect if a player um it'll detect if a player clicked on the part that it's inside of. So to do that just create a part like I like I already did and then click on it and then go down to the click detector and events objects right there. Alright, double click on it. And then you should see it inside of there. Okay, so let's look in the properties. So it's pretty simple. The class name, click detector, max activation bit, max activation distance, and then the name. And then our archivable, which I don't even know what that does. So the only thing you really need to worry about is max activation distance. So what this does is it defines how far away the player needs to be for for it to be for you to be able to click on it. So right now it's set to 32 studs, which is the default. If you want them to only be able to click on it if they were 10 studs away, you type that in and press enter. Okay. And so, you'll, the way you'll be able to tell if there's a click detector inside a part is when you're in the game, and then you put, put your cursor over it, and that little icon should... Oops, that icon there should show up. Okay? So that means that the click detector's in there, and then you can click on it. Right now it's not going to do anything because you haven't put in that event that listens for the click the click so what we're going to do we're going to insert a script actually let's put it in the click detector so we need to do is script dot parent dot mouse click connect okay <coughs> so what this does it gets script dot parent, which is a click detector. It listens for that event in the click detector, which is the event mouse click, which is listening for when you click the when you click the left mouse button, and it connects to this function right here, and it'll run whatever we have in, we put in here. So let's make it print. This brick was clicked. Press play, and then let's test it out. <clears throat> Alright, click on it, and then, and here the output, it said, this brick was clicked. Now let's try it again. This brick was clicked. I clicked it a bunch of times. Um, 
<clears throat> so yeah, that's how you use a click detector. It's very simple, really. You can put anything you want in here. It's not just have to be print. You can make it create a part, make it do a for loop, whatever the heck you want. Very simple, very easy. It can be used for a lot of things. I've seen it in a lot of games. They're not that. They're not. Well, I haven't seen it in a lot of games that are kind of. They're not used as much anymore because people because they don't look as professional as you can most likely already tell because <clears throat> like you put it over there as you can see it doesn't look very the most like the most professional thing in there um but the that one game called Blood and Iron they use it on the doors so you, you can use it to like open doors and stuff but yeah you 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 can use it for your game for a variety of things you could make it so when you click on something, it'll fire a cannon or something like that, or maybe give you a weapon or something like that. You can use it for anything. Though, just keep in mind though they don't look that professional. There are better ways to do it, doing the same thing, like using the button one down function of the mouse. So yeah, that's all I have for you guys today. Hope this helped you. If you enjoyed, please subscribe and thumbs up. And I will see you guys next time.